With 4 million sounds, what will you create? Take the free trial today. Hello and welcome to another Superbooth Home Edition video. Uh, we're here with Mitch from Empress Effects, who's in Colorado in the US. How you doing, Mitch? Hey, good. How are you? Uh, yeah, we're good, thank you. It's nice to uh, nice to see you. And uh, so we're looking at the uh, the the the, the Zoya, uh, the 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 Euro Brewer, which is the sort of Euro rack version or, or incarnation of the Zoya, right? Right. It's um, the desktop or your rack mountable version of the Zoya. But other than that, it's exactly it's exactly the same, right? It's got um, a couple key differences. It's um, got four CV ins, four CV out. It has you know, eighth inch instead of quarter inch stereo in and outs. It has two um, utility buttons that are not on the pedal form. Um, and it has a headphone jack. Handy. And MIDI in and out. Well, I guess the pedal had that too, but... So yeah, what... So what, so, what, what, so what are you showing? Because, I mean, it basically, it's a really hard thing to demo because it can kind of do pretty much anything, right? <laughs> right, it can. Um, <laughs> so you could really go deep into over complicated things which is i have a problem to do with doing that sometimes but um yeah it's you know it has 80 different modules inside of it it has reverbs delays um you can make your own effects out of short delay lines or vcas it has adsrs lfos um all your utility modules is multipliers random modules um it it's really kind of a sandbox of whatever you need it to be and adding it to a euro rack or a modular system it kind of expands on it exponentially where it's just the possibilities are yeah, yeah. even more than with the pedal. So does it work in DC coupled mode? So you can process and output, input and output CV, actual controls and triggers and that sort of thing? Yeah, so there's four CV out, and then the CV outs don't do audio, or they don't input audio. CV ins don't input audio. Right, okay, so they're, that, so they're one, one they for each. They will do audio rate. Right. Right. Modulation. So you've got a patch working up here. What what do you, what are you uh what is it you're 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 working on exactly? <laughs> yeah, right here is just the start of a patch. I was making an LFO mixer and then um I also have like this stereo spread that I'm triggering with my sequ sequencer. So basically if you look at the first CV out, you can see the wave shape that um, the Zoya is outputting. And I have it set up. I have mutes on one side. These push buttons are just mutes. And then the other side are attenuators for all four of these different LFOs I have here going to all four channels. And you could expand upon this. I'm doing some audio processing, too, and I'm only using about 30% of the DSP. So it is, is it making um, a sound? I'm not hearing anything. I don't know whether I'm supposed to be hearing that. Not, ah, okay. I can... Uh, this is just rings into the Zoya. And you can, if I push these buttons you can hear it oh you're adding up the modulate right so lfo mix so right okay. yeah and then i can attenuate it and i also have a random lfo at the bottom to make it crazier but you can see the wave shape there it's kind of 
Sounds great, sounds great, man. That sounds really good. Rings, ring sounds awesome. So, so the, the you're using what are you triggering rings from? A, a presumably an external sequencer, and then you're just modulating the voice. Is that what's happening? Right. Okay. I am. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the Zoe is just doing the mod. There are sequencers inside of it. Um, I could have triggered it with the Zoe. I just already had my patch up here. Um, and then what I'm doing, the other thing in the Zoya is I'm processing rings. So if I, I'll mute my sequencer trigger that's, that's changing the, uh, the stereo spread. Here you're just hearing left and right. But if I trigger the ADSR inside the Zoya, the, uh, the two uh, ring signals start to morph back and forth. Oh yeah, nice. And you can kind of see the... I didn't trigger it. Well, there, now it's doing it. And you can see that I have two audio panners, and now they're kind of going crazy back and forth. And I can adjust my ADSR to kind of have them shift around in stereo. And you can kind of see it move across the stereo so right there and I could add just like a can you add just a regular effect or reverb or something yeah yeah I could just throw a reverb on here and I just patch it together with my fingers like push buttons so I'm gonna patch in both these audio banners and then I just patch it out I think something might be clipping a little bit there. I'm not sure yeah, what's going on. It's clipping. But um, yeah, this is a a beta prototype. So ah, okay. It won't clip in the <laughs> oh, right. in the final hardware. I mean, that that's I, amazing uh, that you could. I mean, you can build something so complex there. I mean, obviously using the front panel there. Is it possible to? Ha can you? Is there a visualizer aspect to this? So if somebody maybe can't handle the button push thing, is there an editor component to this that will make patch creation a little more, a more sort of immediate for those kind of people? Um, no, unfortunately, there's not. Um, there's been some demand for it, so we've been kind of seeing, considering it. But at this point, there's not really when you start working on the Zoya it is it becomes faster I think yeah. than if you had a oh, okay. editor as far as just the push buttons and a couple of people have told me that I was talking to um, Ben Jordan about it and you know his he said his initial um, instinct was to want a patch editor for it but then once he got into it he realized that there was not really any point of one but okay uh, what's the sort of for some people have yeah what, what what's the, i mean you added a reverb there you said you're at 30 percent at that point when you added the reverb where where were we in terms of cp i mean how far can we go with this thing um the reverb is going to be the most uh dsp intensive yeah kind of effect and they're like um quality studio quality dsp algorithms so they're going to use a lot of uh, the DSP on the Zoya. I think they might use 30 to 40%, depending on which reverb. About 25 to 35. There's also a reverb light in here that reverb light only uses. I was at 30, now I'm at 46, so it's using about 15%, 15 okay. on this. And that, do, I mean, are there, have you? Are there, I haven't heard all the effects in here. I mean, obviously that's a sort of regular reverb. But you go. Are there other algorithms in there, like you know, big modulated, shimmery sort of pitch bend, pitch change reverbs and frozen stuff? I mean, how far can you go with those sort of effects as well? Um, they're not built in necessarily. They're more. Um, you could make them from. You might right the pitch shifters and the the things that are already in the Zoya. Um, there's also. You could probably find one on patch storage, which is where people upload their Zoya patches. And there's just a plethora of 
patches on there. It's unbelievable how many patches people made with the pedal version. I'm really excited to see what people do with the Eurorack version. And is there any cross correlation? Because I mean, there are some, you know, some uh, systems like uh, Pure Data and those sort of things. Is there any crossover between people who might be making stuff in there that would be able to kind of port stuff into the Zoya platform, or is it all pretty much sort of uh, uh, closed? To, it's all done via the front panel rather than sort of developer side yeah. stuff. It's a it's closed right, platform. Okay. It's just our own uh, algorithms, but. Um, the workflows, kind of, I mean, it was inspired by Pure Data originally. Steve Bragg, the creator, he was using Pure Data and he wanted a something that wasn't a computer screen to play with. So that's the initial... Uh, so it's like the physical manifestation, kind of, right. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't use... There's a mixed conception that it um, you, runs on Pure Data, um, but... It's all our own algorithms, and uh, yeah, so you can't really port anything. Ah, right, okay. And so, I mean, in terms of uh, sort of onward life, I mean, uh, you've got 80 modules. Presumably, they were less than that at some point. So are modules being kind of thought up or thunk up and, and, and added to the kind of library, and how do you get them onto the machine? Um, there's an SD card, so ah. it should have a sampler, and you can save and load patch. Um, samples to the SD card, but you can also save and load patches to the SD card and organize them in folders. So you can have, a, there's 64 patches on the Zoya, but you could have, I'm not really sure how many folders. It, um, a lot, You could I'd have imagine. multiple folders with 64 patches in each one and load those from the SD card. And is, and is that- you update it too. Ah, is there a limitation to the number of like voices it can happen, sort of processing channels? Does it have a finite number of, of audio paths through it as well? Um, yeah, it's not limited by a number. It's more by the amount of DSP you use. And I'm not sure the exact number, but you could have, you know, a lot of different things going on um, and a lot of different audio paths. Mm. Interesting, because we've got, I mean, just to recap again, how many outputs, audio outputs, we've got two pairs plus headphones. Are headphones separate? Can you actually reuse those as an audio bus as well? Um, unfortunately not. They're linked ah. to the uh, the audio outputs. So, uh, okay, I mean, you know, I could see a lot of people going to be getting very excited by the possibilities of this. I mean, it's the sort of thing that you could sit in front of. I mean, just the perfect thing for lockdown, perhaps, where you've got plenty of time right. on your hands, right? <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yeah, there's um, so many possibilities to it. I feel like I'm learning. It's a learning experience every time I kind of try to make a patch. And then I think it really inspires creativity for me to be able to do all that in one little box and then kind of apply the same ideas to like a modular system. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that's interesting about it is obviously you can use it for so many things. I, I mean, uh, what, are there limitations to like if you LFOs and modulation? How far into the audio rates can those guys go? Because obviously there's that there's limitations with sample rates and whatnot. Is how far does it go up? Right, um, that's a good question, but I'm not sure of the uh, the exact answer. I haven't tested it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, but it's in, it's constantly in development. So when, I mean, obviously things have been delayed with what what's going on in the world, but when's the planned kind of availability for this and what's the price and stuff going to be, do you know? Um, we're hoping for a June release. And um, yeah, it was, we were hoping to release it a couple months after NAMM. But um, yeah, now hoping, shooting for a June release and uh, the price, we don't have a final price yet. Um but I think it'll be around six forty nine, six fifty US. Okay. Um, and then the the enclosure will be uh, sold separately. Right. Okay. Because you've got that in the desktop version. Well, Mitch, thank you so much for showing us this. Maybe you could just play us out with some of those dreamy, uh, dreamy rings pieces, and we can uh, we can wave you off into the sunset. But thank you so much for joining us and uh, taking yeah, the thanks. time out. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Nick. No it's problem. Good talking to you.